Hi, this is Bakabites. I'm Frank Furter. That's Magically Average. Today we are going to talk about why anime movies are dumb. Or, well, sometimes dumb. You brought this topic to me, and it really got my brain, like, fucking going. And you know me. I, That's a rarity. Like, when I start going on, like, a topic or something like this, it just don't stop. And it's just going to be a fucking shit show. We're just going to clarify this now. Because there's, like... I feel like you say anime movies. And then at first I was just like, you know what? I really enjoy anime movies. And then I thought about it. How could we break this down even further? There are anime movies that are original movies. There are anime movies that are non-canon to actual TV shows. And then there's Mm -hmm. anime movies that are canon to TV shows. And then there's fucking Demon Slayer. And and I I just that's just a whole fucking can of worms that I can open up and I just don't want to right now we can get into that later but I want to hear why you wanted to talk about anime movies today uh because I think they're stupid why they're dumb no well obviously you said that you brought this to my attention why do you think they're dumb because they're not necessary they're not I mean well, which, First, which one? Which part of it? Like, are you talking you, about the canon movies, the non-canon movies, listen, the original you, movies? You are moving way faster than what I can handle right now, so you're gonna have to give me a second or two, okay? Let's you need to. You're gonna need Disney to slow your roll. Movie. All right, you're on like five cups of coffee. I'm on what feels like antidepressants. <laughs> Just slow everything down. A Disney Channel movie. <laughs> no, I think I. Th- I think anime movies are fine. I enjoy anime movies. What I hate about them, though, is when you're forced to go to the movie theater for one reason or another, and if you don't, you miss out on a huge chunk of shit. Or, flip side, when you look at something, you're like, why weren't you made into a movie? This would make much more sense as a movie. Why am I watching? Why am I forced to watch you? Please don't tell me we're going to talk about Attack on Titan again. Maybe. Um, God damn it. So, all right, I, I'm I'm very, I guess, don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to the history of anime movies dating back to, we'll say, the early 2000s, okay? I'm fairly sure. caught up on what's been released since the, the 2010s and so on. But before then, not really knowledgeable. I do know, through my experience of watching old school anime and being frustrated as all hell at certain elements to those, that... uh filler season sucked and could be made into movies i remember watching bleach and being knee deep and balls deep into the eisen fight ready to just coom everywhere at the final battle and then had a filler season break up the middle of the battle and was like why in the unholy god was this created and was like this could be a movie I remember watching Naruto and watching filler episode after filler episode and season after season and being like, huh, you know what they could have done? They could have made those into movies. Now I watch anime and every single one's like, we're going to make five movies that are going to take part in a non-canon to canon style timeline where the first two are non, the third is, but only halfway through. The fourth one is not. And then the fifth one is we don't even know the fifth one's just gonna be there because we like the number five like it, it seems like anime has taken a full 180 from we're not gonna give any movies because no one in the united states no one no one outside of japan basically is going to go to the movie theaters and watch an anime movie so we're just gonna make filler seasons to if this show this anime doesn't have at least 20 movies under its belt, it is an utter failure and you should honestly just go to the top of the building and say your prayers. Like cuz it's it's just it's dead in the water. If you don't have 50 movies teed up by season 2, what are you doing with your life? So, I feel like we've gone to, from one extreme to the other and I'm you- I'm sick of it. I I guess I reap what I sow. I will lay in the bed that I have I have created for myself in that I complained before and now I'm just getting overwhelmed by movies, but holy moly, our anime movies are infuriating these days. You're going to really hate me right now. Uh. <laughs> so you were you were talking, you were talking and then you're like I was knees deep and then I was balls, balls deep, deep and then you lo- I, cool you everywhere. lost you lost my train of thought there because I was like, what's the difference between knees deep and balls deep? And I took my hands and I was just like, eh, it's about a half foot and a half, two feet. 
if anyone wants and my to brain just went there my and my brain just went show. there and i just could not stop giggling to since, myself since my controllably <laughs> is a literal infant <laughs> who just got home from daycare if anyone else wants please apply you, our socials will be given to you at the end of the at the end of the recording but you're, you're welcome to reach out i will take any and all applications <laughs> I could not stop giggling to myself and everything you said afterwards it just went out the window I can change your mood in one in one sentence and say uh, tell Demon me your Slayer? thoughts on Attack on Titan well you, yeah either one is fine um no but okay yeah. so so wait but hang on no 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 you were a giggling little I was baby right there so let me just finish up and wrap up so yeah I mean let's we'll point out the big culprits these days which are I mean it's really just Demon Slayer to be honest, that they've gone the way of, hey, rather than make, like, you know, dedicate a part of the season to the transition from previous, or even, hey, just do a one-hour special on TV. They're like, no, 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 get your asses to the movie theater uh, because that's the only way you're going to know what's going to happen ahead of the next season coming out. I mean, they did it with Mugen Train, where it connected the first season to Entertainment District, and which then they're doing it movie. with they're doing it with Swordsmith Village Arc, which is which connecting should... Entertainment to this third season, which is the Swordsmith Village. No, Arc. no. Here's the thing. No, it's not. Everybody's like, this is the misconception with this new fucking Swordsmith fucking Arc movie, and this is why I don't want to talk about it because it's so infuriatingly stupid. The Swordsmith movie, which comes out, I believe, March 3rd, is like, we've got yes. less than a month. We've got a couple weeks now. This fucking movie is the last two episodes of the Entertainment District plus the first episode of the Swordsmith arc. It is not an in-between. It is literally just two fucking episodes that you've already seen and then an episode of new shit that you haven't seen. So it's like, hey, you want to go no, see the first episode before it comes out? On that TV? can't be possible. The end of no, the last go two episodes. Fucking look it up. Go look it up. It is the last two episodes of the fucking Entertainment District and the first episode of the Swordsmith fucking so you're District. Telling, you're telling me that the beginning of the movie is just going to start yes. off halfway through the battle? They're already it's probably fighting? It's probably going to be the battle, and they're going to shorten the battle, and then they're going to do the Swordsmith arc. That is what this movie is. I've had to look it up multiple times because I've been dumbfounded by their I... fucking... It's a cash grab. It's a cash grab. It's you want to go see this movie. You want to see what's going to happen before it comes to TV. Go pay your fucking $15. Go to the movie theater. Here's the last two episodes that you've already watched. And here's one brand new episode. That is literally all this movie is. And yeah, I've that... looked it up multiple times. And this is this is why well, I don't okay. like the Demon Slayer movies. It's infuriating. It's stupid. This one's a cash grab. And the last one just fucking pissed me off because it was too one really long story, which was pretty decent. And then a fucking nowhere out of seat. Like, it's just like, well, let's throw some DLC in there. But let's kill off the fucking main one of the main characters that was oh. in this other movie, which I just that, that, yeah. And don't well, explain gonna... why they were there. And then fucking actual season. I the, it infuriated That's what me I was so going to mention is, is that honestly, the Mugen train would have been fine as a non-canon movie if they didn't include the last 20 minutes. Like if they left, if they didn't include the last 20 minutes, they could have made it a non-canon movie. But then you can't go off and do what they did. I'm trying to not spoil, but at this point, I don't know how you haven't been spoiled about this one character's untimely demise but like so okay I, I and maybe my fault for not researching enough but i do know that the first episode is a one hour special so does that mean that you could get a, basically a sneak preview of the upcoming season and then the one hour special is going to include the latter half of the movie or are do you have to go see the movie because i find that hard to believe because mugen train didn't do that Mugen Train didn't say, hey, you have to go watch the movie before the next season comes out because they released it on TV prior nobody's to the entertainment saying that you Nobody's saying that you have to go see this right. movie. So so then it's technically it it's it's, it's canon. canonical. It's yes, it's canonical, but it's not required. Because there are some shows that are like it's almost required that you go watch it because well, yeah. it's a connecting piece. Yeah, like the, the, Kaguya, the Kaguya the Kaguya Sama movie is the perfect example of that. Because the arc is kind of I mean, you they could have expanded the movie, but that specific arc was a very well-contained arc that it's like, hey, this makes sense to do it in movie form. However, they did cut a lot out of that Kaguya movie, which I won't talk about here. 
But I, I that is something that would be annoying that you have to go see that movie, especially for the fact that it was in theaters for two days with like n- like nighttime showings, and then it was out for the remaining of the week at like ten a.m. locally here. So like the yeah. Kaguya Sama movie that makes sense. The Demon Slayer movies don't make sense. They're adapting it into TV anyways for the fucking Mugen Train movie, which I don't want to talk about that again. But the the Swordsmith Arc movie, which I'm trying to find the articles here, but I'm not able to read fast enough, is literally the last like f- couple episodes of the Entertainment District plus the first episode of the new season. It's like, why would I pay my fifteen dollars to go watch well, don't. the first just, episode? I'm not. Just don't. Yeah. Not. I mean, I'm just gonna wait for the thing to come out in a month yeah, later. It comes out a month later. I mean, it it's a it's a big cock tease to begin with because if you go to the movies and you're like, oh man, this is gonna be great. I can't wait. You still gotta wait like a month or so until it finally comes so out. So here you go. The screenings opened last Friday, February third, in 418 theaters in Japan. The screenings include episodes 10 and 11 of Demon Slayer Entertainment District Arc, as well as the first Swordsmith Village Arc episode. That's it. Okay, That's so all it, so this it, movie is. Okay, so okay, but the first episode of the Swordsmith Village arc is the one hour special. So it's it's a conclusion of the last fight, and they're probably just wrapping up what happened, right? And, and honestly, I would, shipping I would, them to the swords. I would go pay money just to go see the scene where um the little Nezuko runs up to Tengen and lights him on fire. That was just just funny. that one part I would go pay money for. I will um, say that the Entertainment District arc, I really enjoyed that arc. I don't think yeah, it needs to I, be a part of this movie. If you're going to make a fucking movie, make it new stuff. Make it like the first three episodes or something. Or make it to a good like part of the arc that like it's about to ramp up. And it's like, okay, to be continued in the TV show. And then here's the first three episodes. Here's eh. the rest of what it was amping up to. No, I, I'm going to completely disagree with you there. I Truthfully... I would rather you make shit up and have it be the most non-canon, campy, whatever bullshit yeah, like it can my be hero. for a movie. Yeah, those movies are awesome. I will go and watch a My Hero movie every time it comes out in theaters because I turn my brain off. I don't have to follow any... St- I don't have to care about these fucking characters, any new heroes that pop up. Fucking Dave that showed up in the first My Hero. Like I was like, who the fuck are you? Never heard from him since. Like I, I don't care about this shithead that's in America or wherever he is. I think he's American. But like... Like that's that's great movies. I like that. I just I don't want it to have to be something where I have to remember and I have to connect dots and I have to be like, oh my god, this now makes sense. Like I don't want that in a movie. I don't want to go pay money for that. I'm already paying for a subscription to watch your anime come out on a weekly basis. I don't want to have to drag my sorry ass to the theater to then go, okay, for an hour and a half, I have to really pay attention figure out what the hell's going on and try to guess or anticipate or hypothesize what's going to happen next. Like, I don't want that. Just let me turn my stupid brain off and watch dumb shit happen and make it not canonical, please. For love of God, that's all I ask in these stupid movies. So then how do you feel about like, if, okay, so we have two very wide ends of the spectrum here. How do you feel about movies for animes that end a series? So in regards to this, you have no. shows like Eden, Eden of the East, uh, Quintessential Quintuplets, and no. coming up soon, Haikyuu, which it's going to no. be two movies. No. Truthfully, you want to know what, what anime did it the best? Eden of the East, in my opinion. N- fuck no. You want to know what anime did it the best? There's mm. only one right answer. What's that? Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, their movie the was prequel? The be- their movie was the beginning of the anime. Yeah. That's what their movie was. It was the beginning of the anime. It's they like, hey, basically... here's some characters you you could take it or leave it. You don't really need to see it. They they did a Star Wars. They were like, here's our first season. Here's all the characters. Here's the plot line. Here's the main enemy. Here's some, you know, fights, some intense shit happening, right? They're setting up for another season. But hey, guess what? We're going to release a movie after the first season that is a prequel. It's a precursor to everything that just happened. You don't have to even watch the first season. You could go into the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie blind, not know anything, and you would still know just as much as those who had watched the first season. That's the way you do it. That is the epitome of... That's, that is the type of quote-unquote canonical, because I would argue that it's not since Jujutsu Kaisen Zero came out 
after like the, the actual volume itself came out after like the first whatever seven or eight volumes had already been written i think i don't know you I can, can look it up yeah you can look it up but i'm pretty sure the author i can't remember their name did not have Jujutsu kaisen zero written prior to already creating like at least the first six or seven i want to say i could be absolutely bonkers here but you can fact check me on that one but like uh, but that no, is the, the way Jujutsu kaisen zero came out in april 2017 that it was the first one. No, well, I don't know when. Hold on, April twenty seventeen is when Jujutsu Kaisen Zero came out. Yeah, the manga came out. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen came out in twenty eighteen. Okay, so they they did have Zero written. It yeah. wasn't adapted for some reason in English until later, for some fucking dumb reason. Yeah, it came out in December twenty eighteen as like a volume in Japan, and then twenty twenty one in the states. Yeah, which is dumb because we already had at that point we had like up to volume six or seven or even more in the state whatever i digress so they had it in japan cool beans i got it wrong whatever my point still stands though like yeah it's a good that, it's a good adaptation great. it's because because it does exactly what you wanted to right it allows you to make a film it allows you to dedicate an entire hour and a half hour 45 to a single piece of the story that has no bearing on the rest of the story that has already been written and adapted into the anime. Like, you you don't have to know about any of these characters in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero because they either they're already in the first season and already established and have they have not been impacted whatsoever by Zero, or, and I forget the kid's name, I can't remember, the one with uh, Re Rhea, the... He's got the oh. super strong bitch, and he's got a sword, and he's uh, badass. Yuta? Yuta? Thank you, Yuta. Or, like, for Yuta, he's kind of, like, mentioned in passing in the first season, but it's not impactful to the season. You don't have to know about him. They're just like, yeah, they're, they're, FYI, there's a second year that's really strong, too, but he's off on some adventure. And you're like, cool. There's one less person. Awesome. And then you realize, oh, shit, this person is, uh, we learn more about him in the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the prequel. I'll, I'll, sure, I'll go watch and learn about him. But, but you, you learning that in the movie has no effect on your enjoyment of the, of the entire first TV season. Show. Yeah, exactly. I get, I get what is, you're saying. That is the way to do a movie. I hate, I hate, I hate animes that end with a movie like find out next time in your local theater which bitch this dude decides to marry fuck off so then That's let, stupid. Me, let me pose the question to you do you think that the upcoming ending for attack on titan should have been a movie that yes this is a this is what we call an outlier in the sense <laughs> that they are being assholes by making two specials instead of just one fucking movie you can't yeah. tell me I'm wrong. No, right? I, I completely tell... think that it should have been a movie. I was the first Attack... one to be like, are you fucking kidding me? This should have been a movie. Well, we predicted it not even halfway through the last season. We're like, this is we going like, to be a this movie. Is gonna, this... This is the... We're like, it's Everybody not Everybody in the industry was saying this is going to be a movie. Yeah. I mean, you you could tell very, very early on that it wasn't going to end. The question really just became, how are they going to wrap this up? Is it going to be another full season? Is it going to be a movie? Is it going to be a special? What's going to happen? And we everyone thought movie because from the from the manga readers, they were like, well, there's only nine or ten chapters left. So God knows they can't do a full season. And from the anime watchers, it's like, well, how much left is there? We already got to the big piece of the what they were singing about in the opening theme song, right? We finally got to that point. Probably. They've been talking about it for weeks Probably. and weeks and weeks, but yeah, I just, Attack on Titan is... Uh, it and, is an outlier. It's, and it's frustrating too, because it, it is one of those situations where you look at it and you go, why aren't you a movie? Because now they're like, hey, it's going to be an hour and a half special or something. But you already know there's going to be another sequence to that special. So then you're going to go into this first one. I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but I, I would assume other people are going to be in the same boat as me. You're going to this first one being like, OK, how much of this could have been cut out and truncated into a singular film? Right. Yeah. Like how much of this is going to be fluff? Because there was. Again, all of you Attack on Titan diehards fans out there, I get it, but please, please take off your rose-colored glasses and just look at it 
like in, in a critical view, there was a lot of fluff in the last season. Last there part were, of the last season. There were three different episodes that either had camping or picnics. And I do uh, like that pie. was like that was the majority <laughs> That, that, that pie didn't look really <laughs> strumdiddlyumptious, I'll tell you that. Like, like there, there were so many parts. Like, there, that, there was a whole episode that was just them camping, and, and the only thing that came about it was some, I can't remember who it was, punched Reiner in the face and, like, wanted to cave his fucking teeth in. Like, that was it. And I'm like, cool, all right? Sure, you're showing some internal conflict. You're showing some really like gotta grapple with myself, my emotions, and figure out who's who's in the right and how, who whose side am I gonna be on when when all is said and done. Like I get that, but it it did not deserve a full episode. Okay, there was a lot of parts that did not deserve to even be animated. Truthfully, yeah. But the reason they did it was because they extended it out and they were stretching it as far as they could to get to this point, which again. Everyone hoped was going to be a movie. Okay? But no, you're getting two additional parts, each being specials, presumably, of an hour and a half long or so. One last question before we move on to something. We'll, we'll chill out a bit and we'll talk about something we both like. No, I... Do you I'm, think that the two I'm specials... Angry. Do you think that the two specials, after they're, they've aired, that they will sell them on Blu-ray as a movie... Or part of the complete like season four I, or some bullshit. The the funny thing was I was just thinking about this because I was gonna mention how like with the Demon Slayer Swordsmith movie, whatever, I'm like, okay, they you're you're paying twelve, fifteen bucks to go see it in theaters, but how much of a fucking ruse is it for the Attack on Titan people to be like by BT dubs attack on Titan final seasons, part four, part three and part four, part or however the name naming it. Each one's going to be an individual Blu-ray, or you could spend an additional five, the $50 and get it all bundled. But each part's going to be its own Blu-ray and some Blu-rays are going to have multiple Blu-rays because they're full seasons. Like that's what they're going to do. You fucking know that's what they're going to do. Well, it's it's even worse that I think My Hero Academia does this, and I'm pretty sure Attack on Titan does this. Where initially, after the season airs, they sell it as like season three part one, and then season three part two, and then as time passes, they're like all of season three. So it's like you have to buy three fucking different things, but like you already have them. But it's like, oh, I could have it all in one complete box set. So you know that they are going to do this bullshit of either they're going to sell each movie or each special individually, each special as just a package, and then they're going to do a whole thing of season four or season whatever fucking season they're on as like a whole. Season four, the finale, the final ending part. The final countdown, final ultra redux. deluxe, mega edition, arcade, power. Yeah. Um Truthfully, I think that they'll sell both parts on one disc or in one package, and then they'll oh, sell no. it as I. I think that's what they'll do. You unless are, they unless you they think, sell it immediately think, after it comes out. I that was like you think they're gonna wait their little asses until the end of fall, into winter to release the both. <laughs> Fuck no, they're capitalized uh, capitalizing on those mouth breathing diehard Attack on God. Titan fans. Anyway, fucking let's... brain dead. Just zombies waiting for the next bit. We want Aaron. Aaron. Like, you can have him. Please, for the love of God, take him. Do whatever you want with him. I don't care. Just get him off my screen, please. Sniff his toes. I don't know. Anyways, yes. let's move Sniff on to something that's a little bit big more Big old toters. Oh, God. <laughs> what let's do you want to talk about now? I wanted to ask you, uh, because we've, we focus a lot on canonical and non-canonical anime that are, like, part of series, what yes. is your like favorite movie that is just an original movie that is a standalone movie? Like, what's your favorite anime standalone movie? Is it That's... a Ghibli film? Is it something else? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Ghibli was the. I mean, Studio Ghibli films were what got me into anime movies to begin with. Because before then, I just I didn't think that there were really anything besides Studio Ghibli when it came yeah. to what when it came to the quote like anime films because I, I would still consider them to just be animated films I, I wouldn't categorize them as like anime but just okay. because they're Japanese it's like oh it's an anime film but I, I mean Studio Ghibli was by and far 
the the their movies were what got me into just anime movies in general. Um, like Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, uh, My Neighbor Totoro, all of those. They're wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in recent years, I've watched a number of these I would consider to be anime movies um, that I've really enjoyed. And I think the one that stands out was one that we all, by all, I mean, with just a close group of people that then reviewed it, um, we watched was Inuo because I thought I that was it. just. I knew you were going to bring it up. It was so, it, it was such a really cool take on how to tell a very old story in a new age way. I yeah. thought that was really cool. I, in terms of just like fully blown, like entertained from like start to finish, like could not believe what I was watching. It, I don't know. I always go back and forth because I've watched some that you that we've been like, oh, this is fucking you've hated specifically. Um, Demon Slayer? <laughs> no, God, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, I really liked. And this is controversial, I know. It's not my favorite, I'll just say. I'm using it as an example of, like, what I like in movies. But, like, I, I did actually like Bubble. I was because... about to say, if you liked, if you were going to, if you were gonna, about, I was, mm, 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 mm. you're so angry. I was about to say, if you um, were about to utter the words, well, Bubble me, was me, a good let movie, let we're going to have no, some it's words, not a, It's son. not a good movie. It is it's not a horrible, good movie. horrible plot. Oh, my God. You horrible never, plot. Let... Continue. Why uh, did you enjoy it? It's not a horrible plot. It it their their way of telling the story was poor. Was very poor. Um, and they used the My Little Mermaid story as a crux to to get them across the finish line. Fucking limped across the finish line, basically. Yeah. But but the concept was interesting. The animation was incredible. Like what doesn't the miss? music? No. Yeah. The music's design. Like the characters, I liked. I did enjoy the world. I thought that was really, really interesting. And I, again, I thought the concept was very, very intriguing. Their yeah. storytelling was piss poor, and exactly. I think that's that's why it was that's why it was not received well because they the did a lot of shit. like. Again, no, the plot was good. How it unraveled was bad. That is the storytelling piece. The, the plot, plot was actually the s- plot is story. The the Plot rest of it story. is lore. The rest of it is lore. Lore no, no. is great. But uh, no, you are wrong, and here's why you're wrong. First, because you're dumb. All right, <laughs> get the easy one out of the way. I got rocks no, for cause, brains. Cause, <laughs> okay, the concept of like this, like this phenomenon happening that drives like this huge event takes place and there's this giant bubble all these bubbles start flying across the world you're like wow that's really mysterious and then they take advantage of the decrepit landscape that's overflown with water and they try to make like an entertainment theme from it by doing parkour running it's like okay cool i guess but not your focus obviously but then it became the focus right it's like, okay, getting too much into the parkour running race thing. Let's get more into the why this happened. But they just continued along with it. And it's like, okay, please, for the love of God, let's move on. And then the last, like, 20 minutes were them just bam, 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 bam. Starty's done. And you're like, whoa, way too much happened and way too quickly. And you didn't really unpack it well. And that felt really forced. That was the issue. Again, plot was good. They had the right concepts. They had all the pieces in place, but they focused too much on what was supposed to be like the secondary element to the show, the movie, and not the mis- the mystery of the event, the phenomenon that took place, which became the afterthought of the story. That's why it was bad. But again, going too deep into this bubble business, this is all to say... I thought Bubble, from an animation point, from a sound design point, from, again, a plot point, was a really good example of, like, here's what you can do with a standalone anime movie in today's day and age and have it be superb. Like, it could have been really good, but it fell way, way, way short. But then I watch a lot of like other ones that, you know, people just kind of throw away. Like I watched um, Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop. Thought that was enjoyable. I thought it was lovely. We watched Goodbye Don Glees. 
such a cool concept. I thought it kind of struggled at the end a little bit too, but tomato, potato, whatever. The point being, though, is that I find those movies, even if they're bad, even if they don't hit the mark, to be so much more satisfying than an anime movie that, truthfully, should not have even been made. Like, I get so much more satisfaction out of watching a an original film or an ad- adaptation, whatever it might be, that is separate from an ongoing series be just done well in one way, shape, or form. Again, I like I appreciate animation. I appreciate story design. I appreciate character development. I appreciate the ability to actually unravel a plot well more than I do going into the theater and just going, okay, so this is for this anime connecting this point to this point, or, oh, this is for this anime and it's non-canonical. And I guess I just shut my brain off and shovel popcorn in my mouth and slap clap my way to the victory line. Like it's good. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Sure. But I don't get that same satisfaction of a, of a original anime film that tries in some way, shape or form to reimagine something or redo something or whatever their take's going to be. I I Uh, like that more. I like the try. I like the effort. Then I have a a quick question. You hesitated. You, you were, you were saying that when you shovel popcorn in your mouth, but you hesitated (laughs) saying mouth. And I really want to know what you were about to say. I was going to say gullet. Okay. I was using big words. I wanted to say (laughs) gullet, but I didn't, I didn't want (laughs) to say gullet. Like you, you had started to say something and I was just like, yeah, I thought you were to say shovel it in my ass. Because you have a pea brain and that's where you're I've got one brain cell and it is fucking rubbing the side of the wall of my brain as best it can. But boy, oh boy, is it smooth up there and it can't get any traction. Um, Mm -hmm. Uh, no, like, um, bubble aside, because I thought the storytelling in it, like, the the lore of it and the world of it, I thought was amazing. I thought it had a great concept, yeah. but the story of it, like, the whole story that they told was terrible. The plot yes. was terrible. The lore yeah. and the p- concept was good. Regardless, uh, for me, I feel like answering the question of what my favorite anime movie, like, original movie, is kind of a difficult one for the fact that... Um, I can go, you know, old and say, you know, Castle in the Sky because I literally grew up with Castle in the Sky and the Fox dub of My Neighbor Totoro. Like yeah. those two movies were a huge part of my childhood. Um, but I can also go say like I absolutely fucking every year I rewatched Your Name. I think Your Name is a brilliant movie. Whether I watch it dubbed or subbed, I enjoy it. It's a great movie. But I also love, like, Momoru uh, Hosoda's movies. Uh, so I love all his early stuff. So, like, Boy and the Beast, Girl Who Leapt Through Time, uh, fucking, God, oh, no, what is it? Uh, Summer Wars. Those three movies alone are fucking amazing. They're just, like, as good as any Studio Ghibli movie or Ghibli movie or whatever you want to call it because I know everybody calls it something different. I think those three movies by themselves rival most Studio Ghibli movies. Because they are so good. But um, I think like more recent movies like Inuo and uh, for me, I really enjoyed Goodbye to Anglis. I think those movies are phenomenal too. And like I think every age, like every decade has kind of like their, you know, handful of movies that really stand out. Um, there are still a shit ton of movies that I haven't seen. Like you mentioned words bubble up like soda pop. Haven't seen that one. There's others that were just added on Crunchyroll that I fucking forget what it is. And I've wanted to see it, and I can't remember what the name of it. I know. There's there's so many. There's so many. But, like, there's so many movies coming out now that I feel like I can't keep up with it. I feel like every other week, Sam and our server just comes in. He's like, hey, anybody going to go see this movie? I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) I was like, what? Uh, Sure, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, like, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's the beauty, too, about where we're at as well. Like, I mean, to to what we were saying before, in I mean, living in the United States, if you wanted to watch any sort of, again, quote unquote, anime film in the late 90s, early 2000s, you basically just had Studio Ghibli. Like that was all that was known over here was Studio Ghibli, unless you were old enough to dive deep into the Internet when it was first being born and traverse the 
thousands of sites that you could pirate movies from and you found the random anime ones that were either translated or at least, you know, at the very least subtitled for you to watch, then yeah, I mean, sure, you might have known about those. But growing up, it was like Studio Ghibli. That was it. That was all you sort of, that was the pinnacle of the, again, quote, anime film library. Nowadays, to your point, like the, the, there's tons coming out all the time. Like the, the director that you had spoken about that did Summer Wars and uh, The Boy and the Beast and, and all those. Like I haven't even watched any of them, right? But they're in my library of to do, to like to watch. And there's tons that come out what feel like every week that are just getting piled up in my library. And that's a great thing to have, in my opinion. What's not good to have is to be watching an anime and going, fuck. I've got to go watch the film before I get move on, don't I? And having that be like a uh, feeling. <laughs> I want a feeling of I've got a library of 30 anime films I want to watch, but guess what? I can watch them whenever I have the time. I'll, you know what? Maybe I'll spend a whole weekend and watch through five, six films. Just have a potato filled weekend where I don't do anything and just watch anime films. Or, you know, I got a long trip coming up. I'm flying to Japan for my honeymoon in a month and a half. Like, I can download a bunch then and watch them then. Versus, again, we'll give some slack to Demon Slayer, but I'm still going to give it a little shit. Like, Demon Slayer, where you're like, do I fucking have to go to the movie? Uh, No, No, you don't. I I know you don't. I know you don't. But there's a lot of people that are going to because they're going to feel like they have to. They're like, well, the first episode, it shows the first. Oh, man, come on. I guarantee you half of the people that go to that fucking movie, they're going to be like, why am I watching the Entertainment District? They don't know oh, what the I, fuck I, they're going to be watching. They they I don't know, doubt oh, it. it's the Swordsmith Village arc. Oh, I don't boy, I can't wait. And then they're going to be like, it was but, 30 minutes to an hour, if that, of this fucking arc. Like, but even an anime that you and I both adore, and we both saw the movie recently with Kaguya-sama. The, the, I absolutely The kiss that never ends. I thought the movie was great. Now, did it feel a little bit shitty that you probably should go watch it before the next season comes out, whenever it does? Yeah, yeah. It also sucks that, you know, the next season, I don't think, has been even announced yet, so you don't even know when it's going to come out. But, yeah. And if you're I, like Frank and a loser and you read all of it already and spoiled it yourself, then sure, uh, you don't really care. But it, my my point is, is that when it comes to movies that are based on an ongoing anime series, it's more of a chore to go and watch the film than it is an enjoyment versus all the other anime films that, again, as great as some are and as piss poor as others are, still feel much more enjoyable in 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 satis- satisfying at the end of the day. It it's just my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I think originals are a lot better uh, than movies that are tied to properties. Unless they are non-canon, because the My Hero Academia movies, I haven't watched the third one, yeah. are fucking, they're just a fun watch. They just turn off your brain, eat some goddamn popcorn, and just enjoy yourself. Like, yeah. those movies are great. Also, I, I will say another nomination into this type of movie, I haven't seen the second one, the SAO movies. The SAO, uh, pro, yeah. uh, uh, fuck, I can't remember what the hell they're called. Whatever. Progressive, thank you. Yeah, I watched the first one. I absolutely loved it. If you've never watched SAO, it is literally the first... Or if you haven't watched the movies, it's SAO Season 1 Through the Eyes of Asuna. It is just a good old time. If you've seen the show, great. You can turn your brain off and watch it. If you've see, if you've never watched it, you get the events of Season 1 or parts of Season 1. It's a good mm. time. Mm. I Anywho. feel like that's a cash grab, though. Not really. It's just like it's not necessarily... like. That's like it's, s- that's it's like canonical, saying, like, but it's oh, not like. That's like saying there's a toilet bound Hanako san movie coming out, but instead of it being about the first, you know, it's the first season, but it's from the perspective of the toilet. Like, who fucking cares what perspective it's from? It's still the same shit. Like, eh, yeah, don't you know. don't have to it, see it. You can see opinion. it if you want to. It's it's a yeah. good time. And that know. goes to I, my that that goes to my point of like it, it it they make you feel like you gotta. It's like, oh god, I gotta go. I got, I gotta fucking go see it. Sao, I, I, I'm just drooling over myself. The next <laughs> Sao is coming out. Just, oh god, it's, a, it's a must. I just, it's that's feels like a chore. I don't want watching anime 
and watching movies to feel like a chore. I want it to be fun. Well, it isn't. Anyways, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And on that downer. And, and on that note, thank you all for joining us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. I've been Frank Fritter. He's been Magically Average. Until next time, spark triumph. We'll see you then. <laughs>